Hello guys and welcome to Surfing Connoisseur. Today we're going to look at how to take surf photography with a GoPro. I'm going to cover what I know and what I've learned in my time doing it. I warn you beforehand that you are going to be left with the paradox often of whether to get in the sea or not. To get the best surf photography you need the best waves but when the waves are good I personally don't want to shoot photography. I want to be surfing those waves. So as you'll probably see from my photos which I'm going to run through the course of this video to give examples that they're not in the best surf and to get the best pictures you do need better surf. Another warning I want to throw in is that surf photography is obviously dangerous so do be careful don't assume that because you're taking pictures it is any safer than when you are surfing. If anything else particularly in water photography is more dangerous than surfing because you don't have a big float of a surfboard attached to you if anything goes wrong you're swimming off your embolition and your own body and you're probably more likely in the impact zone which is not only in the way of the waves but also surfers and boards and things so please take care do things slowly don't do anything just on my advice be sensible and uh, always stay within your own limits and know your limits do things gradually don't paddle out a 20 foot pipeline and start shooting photography with a GoPro. If you've never been out your local beach break in some slop and got some easier pictures first. So starting from the start we have two main types of surf photography. There's obviously the photos you take from the beach uh, of surfers out in the water or the pictures you take in the water. I'm going to start talking about photos taken from the land because GoPros really aren't ideal for that. Um, I'll roll a few of my pictures I've taken from the land now, none of which were taken on a GoPro. They were taken with a digital SLR, with a telephoto lens, nothing too zoomy, but that type of image wouldn't be possible with a GoPro. GoPro is a wide angle which gives you great action sports images and help is great for taking pictures when you're close to a subject, but if you take a picture from a distance it's not too bad for landscapes when you want to get in a big landscape, but it is no good for when for a surfing shot when you're trying to focus on one particular feature, surfer on a wave, and you're maybe like 50 yards at the closest away from the surfer, and at bigger point breaks you may even be further away from that. You're going to get nowhere near close enough. That said, you can still shoot creatively with a GoPro at beaches if it's all you've got. There's nothing to stop you trying. But you'll be getting more images where you're getting in the whole landscape. So I've played around with images like this in the past, never with my GoPro admittedly, but where you're taking picture of more than just the wave and just the surfer. So you could have a play around with that, but what GoPros are really designed for, given the waterproof housings on them, is getting in the sea, immersed with the action and getting the images. But there are a number of nuances which can help you massively and you'll no doubt learn over time, but by watching this video, you're gonna accelerate the speed you learn those things. The first thing I wanna talk about is technique. Shooting in the water is obviously a lot different to shooting on land. Um, most people nowadays with camera phones have took loads of pictures on land, but you've probably, if you've never used a GoPro, been in the water taking photos. So don't be surprised if the first time you go in, the picture and come out, the pictures aren't that good. Um, certainly the first few times I did that I was a bit like well why is that so bad I've, it framed really well particularly with the GoPro you have no screen on the back so you can't see what you're shooting and the angle is so wide that you've probably never shot with anything quite as similar uh, commonly so your idea of framing is going to be different in the water the best advice I can give is that for the best pictures you need to be close to the action now I'm going to caveat that and remind you of the warning I gave earlier about being safe do not get too close to surfers Boards have fins on them, particularly long boards have massive fins on them. Even a bodyboard, if they hit you on a wave, are gonna hurt. So be careful and be sensible. When you start shooting water photography, start from a distance, start from way away. Yes, the pictures won't be as good, but you'll be safe. If there's no point in getting an amazing picture if you are knocked unconscious by a surfer or killed at the worst case and don't ever get that picture to be published anywhere. So whatever you're doing, be careful. A number of photographers nowadays wear helmets owing to the fact that they've got surfers coming at them at speed. Um, other tips for staying safe in terms of getting close would be shooting with people that you know. Um, obviously, people aren't going to be that impressed if you rock up at a break and are getting really close to them while they're trying to surf. If it's a friend though or somebody you know, um, they're going to be much happier with you getting close to them and you're probably going to have a better idea of how they surf. You can by all means shoot other people in the lineup, but I'd certainly recommend asking them if you're going to start getting close to them. Just a few examples of images I've taken though to give you an idea of how uh, getting close to the action gives you the best shots. 
And uh, I'll try and throw a few in there as well where I've been a bit, bit further away and how they're not quite as good. When you're shooting on your board, shooting angles, when you're surfing and shooting pictures, for me, it's the same as any photography. You want to play around with angles and get different ideas and different things to make it more unique. So this image, which is probably one of my favorite images I've ever taken because it was taken on holiday in Hawaii, surfing Waikiki. I didn't want to just get a picture of me surfing where I could have been anywhere in the world. So you'll see how I framed it with the uh, diamond head mountain, diamond head volcano crater in the background with a bit of the industrialized bit of Waikiki. That's exactly the shot I was trying to do. Now, I was trying to get this picture for ages and this is the one that came out right. So it just shows how using that burst mode um, and over and over again it works. You'll also notice if you analyze it a bit closer, there are little beads of water on the image. And again, using the burst mode allow me to pick the one where the, we're in the most favorable place. You'll learn pretty quickly shooting in the water. You get water on the lens, obviously, and you'll find that it kind of beads up and stays on the lens and it can really ruin some awesome pictures. You'll get back, the picture will be firm, pr framed perfectly, but there will be a massive droplet of water across it, which is so frustrating. Now, the technique normally with a flat port lens is to keep it dry, but flat port lenses on a digital SLR are normally significantly bigger, and keeping a lens dry if you're surfing the type of brakes I surf and like getting pictures at is difficult to say the least, and impossible if you follow me up on the tip about being close. Uh, you're obviously going underneath the water, you're not gonna be able to keep it dry all session. Now, proper SLR photographers play around with ideas of taking like a mini squeegee type thing so you can wipe off the water uh, and always get it dry in the water. I, again, this, the shore break type stuff that I normally take pictures in, it would make it impossible. So I mixed it with a method which uh, a proper photographer would normally use on a wide angle lens. Now wide angle lens would normally be like a dome port is what they're called. They're curved basically over the front of the lens. And photographers for these will spit on them, as gross as it sounds. And it doesn't stop water beading up, but it actually creates a thin film of water over the lens. Um, because it's wide angle, it doesn't focus on this and shoots past this. And that thin film right over it gives you a, a good as clear picture, or at least it doesn't look like there's any water on the lens. So what I recommend doing um, is just quick lick, water, and then when you take it out of the water, it should stick to it. Um, if you don't want to lick it because you don't want to get seawater in your mouth, you can obviously spit on it. Probably safer and more hygienic too to just spit on it. But the key is get some spit on it, cover the lens, and then when you put it underwater and bring it back up, you can try it a few times yourself. You'll notice the water drains off more slowly. And if you can shoot with that water still on there, covering the whole thing, the picture should look okay still. Another tip I have, which I found out the hard way myself, and uh, I'll try and put a video up maybe now of when I filmed with this, is that if you are taking this out with a board or with used surf equipment, keep wax well away from this lens. And by wax, I don't just mean the top of your board. I mean, the wax does kind of stick to your hands and particularly if you wear neoprene gloves in the winter, uh, like you have to on my coast, it sticks really nicely to that. So when you go to grab your camera, your hands touch the lens, the wax gets on the lens, and that makes your image look super blurry, and that sucks, so stay well away from that, because once it's on there, it's really difficult to get off, especially if you've got waxy gloves. Final thing on technique is what setting do you want to use on the camera? Now, there's two settings you could use. There's one I always tend to find myself using now. Um, the one that I initially thought was good was the time lapse mode, which will take a picture however many seconds you set it to take. I think the lowest you can do is half a second. Um, somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but that will basically take a picture every half a second. Now, that sounds really fast, but it actually was too gappy for me. Um, I use it occasionally when I'm surfing with the camera, doing like selfie type photos on the board or in my mouth, uh, on a mouth mount type thing like this. I might have... I might have the camera on that mode because I can get more of the wave in then. But even then I find that it misses all the key points. I'll do a nice turn at the end and it'll get me just going into the turn and coming out of it, which obviously isn't what you want. The bonus to that is that if you're using it in the water, it does free your hands up so you can surf more properly. The technique I use most of the time, however, is there is a burst mode on the GoPro, which will take, I think, 30, 30 photographs in one second that is on my gopro hero 3 there's obviously been a few models since then it may now be faster so people again in the comments let me know whatever it takes a second now though if that has improved and increased i'd recommend that mode that is when you're going to get your best pictures this picture that i'm going to put up now was surf selfie mode the downside is obviously 
that I had a hand holding the camera, which didn't allow me to surf too freely. The upside to that was that I got to choose my moment for the picture and frame it exactly how I wanted it. I also use this in my normal photos when I'm not surfing and I'm just shooting photographs in the water. You'll see from these images that loads of them were kind of nearly just about right, but there's just those handful of ones in there which are just a bit better than the rest. And that's why shooting on this mode gives you the most opportunity to get the best picture you can. So tools wise, there's also a few different things you're gonna need. Obviously you need your GoPro. You may wanna play around the mouth mount, especially if you're on your boards doing some while you're surfing photography. You can actually hold it in your mouth, which allows you to surf and get shots at the same time, which is cool, freeze your hands up. Um, I don't personally paddle out with my mouth mount in, I throw it around my neck on a leash because when you're laying on a board like this, you find the board, the board hits you in the mouth repeatedly, which isn't very nice. I've actually reviewed this in a previous video, I'll link it at the end of this video for my views on this in more detail. You're also going to need, in my view, a leash. This is my favourite leash, this is the leash I use when I'm shooting photography. It is a bodyboarding bicep leash which would go here. Um, I find the bicep leashes, anyone who's body, bodyboarded will know, stay out of the way better than the wrist leashes. You can imagine if you had a leash here, it'd be hanging around like here and it'd be more in the way. Whereas when it's here, it's kind of just more out of the way. So that's my preference. Um, this here is a stand-up leash. If, in all honesty, there's nothing to stop you using this for a GoPro, but you're gonna have like all that room to fish around for your GoPro. So if that's all you've got, I'd personally rather be using this than no leash at all because I don't want to lose my um, my camera. Other alternatives, not something I've ever used, but uh, this is a fin saver for a bodyboard. If you had big wrists or a small enough fin saver, I don't think there's anything to stop you using something like this. Maybe an idea. You've not, although it's on your wrist then, so it keeps it near your hand, there's no massive cord to get in the way. So it's a possibility. The leash I would be using whether I'm surfing and shooting or shooting by myself, because even if I was just shooting, I wouldn't want to have the camera by itself, even if I had a floaty back door, just because I'm clumsy and drop things. My next suggestion, this only really applies to if you're in the water shooting, not if you're surfing too, obviously. Bodyboard fins, or fins is the key, I suppose, but we're looking at the type of fin, I'd recommend bodyboarding fins. These are Vipers, they're quite expensive. You don't have to go this expensive, I wouldn't say, if you're just using them for shooting, particularly if you're new to it and wanna see if you really enjoy it. You can get, I think my first bodyboarding fins when I was younger were about 20 quid. Um, what's that in dollars? Probably about 30, I imagine, 30 dollars-ish, I think. Um, but you can get some pretty good deals on fins. They allow you more maneuverability. You can quickly shoot across if you see a set coming through into the zone you want to be, helping you with getting close to the action, like I said about. But they also are a safety aspect for me as well. Um, you're, you can swim so much easier and further with these on than you could without them. So I would definitely recommend them. The reason I recommend bodyboarding fins is because they are shorter in length than a diving fin and stay out of the way a bit more. But, and they're designed for propulsion over a short, speedy distance as well. They're not designed like a long, slow paddle while you're scuba diving or um, snorkeling. They're designed for quick instant speed, which is what you want. And because they're shorter, they're, a bit, they're not easy to walk in, believe me, but they're a bit easier to walk in. So if you're shooting a shorey, you can kind of get away with walking around still. Um, once you've learned a bit of a technique and got used to it. To anyone who's not worn these before though, I wouldn't recommend you paddle straight out into big surf with them. Most surfers, where I've, when I used to bodyboard a lot, if we swap boards and they jumped on my bodyboard for a bit, these killed their ankles and their muscles in their feet because it's muscles you don't use a lot. Even if you've surfed for 20 odd years or whatever, you've not used that part of your ankle and that muscle. So they really are difficult to use at first. So definitely try and use them out maybe into some smaller surf or a swimming pool if you can and get an idea of how you're gonna deal with them. Even if you're using a leash, I would recommend one of these. It's a floaty back door. I personally use the GoPro one, even though it's a bit more expensive than some of the cheaper ones on eBay, simply because even with the GoPro one, I've read horror stories about the adhesive because that is just stuck onto the back door through uh, a sticky adhesive material. Coming off, your back door's still floating, the camera's gone down. Um, now obviously if you're wearing a leash, that doesn't matter too much. Um, so the reason I still recommend this even with a leash is that you can kind of just throw your camera and leave it to float, obviously attached to a leash. It's not going anywhere, but then it's easy to grab when you need it. So it just, it allows you to have a bit more hands-free easily. And the orange big floaty back door just lets you grab it nice and quick. The final thing I use, 
is these. These are condensation fog, anti-fog paper. I don't know what the actual name for them is, but I certainly recommend getting some. These are just a cheap one because they're not going to be detrimental to my camera if they don't work, just my photos. Um, so these were off eBay. Uh, they've lasted me ages. I do need some more at the moment. You basically whack them in the oven quickly the night before you go for a surf. You pop them in your camera housing and it stops it from steaming up. I'd love to know from the guys um, who do shoot in warmer climates, actually, if you have a problem with your camera, st camera steaming up. Because I get the impression it's maybe to do with shooting in cold water a lot. Then the, the temperature difference between the camera and the outside air. Um, but yeah, these are a lifesaver. Certainly improve the pictures. They do mean that when you go shooting, you have to prepare the night before or at least the morning before. But certainly the night before is better. It gets more of a condensation out there. And if nothing else, it's less of a rush. Another tip I've heard people doing when they use these is obviously once you've heated them, taking your camera outside and doing it in a cool environment. So you aren't taking all that moisture from the warm air inside and then it's still in there anyway when you go into the cold sea but if anyone's got any tips on avoiding condensation they'd be great to share in the comments below because i know a lot of cold water shoots have problems with that myself included now the final one isn't something i use at the moment but maybe something i invest in in the future is mounts poles uh, all sorts of things you can get to put your camera on now these range from little foam things this big to like big selfie stick size things to proper triggers now which look like a gun almost and turn your camera into a almost professional camera. Now, they vary in price massively. The reason I don't use one is because I don't use my GoPro enough to uh, justify the Connect trigger, which is, makes it easier to shoot with. The way you hold the camera is easier, it puts it a bit close to the action. It looks brilliant, by the way, but it just, out of my price range for how much I use the camera. Um, I don't think it's unreasonably priced. It's a, certainly a good price for what it does to the camera, but I just don't get enough use out of the camera to do that. Then the reason I don't use the cheaper versions is because I don't think I'd benefit from them. I don't see any reason why I need my camera on a little pole. I don't want a long pole. It'd be too far away from me to know what's being framed and things. So if anything, I'd use a little one. And for me, I'd then be having to use two hands, whereas now I can grip my I can grip my GoPro like this and I can shoot pictures, although I do sometimes find problems with fingers going in the front because it's such a wide angle, even putting your thumb like this may result in thumbs over your images and therefore ruined images. So at first I'd recommend going out with it just in your hand, seeing how your images turn out, and then just imagining how having a mount would change how you hold it and if it would be a preference to you. These mouth mounts can also even be used, There's certainly loads of ways you can grip on, it just gives you an extra bit of thing to hold. The GoPros are so small so it does give you a bit more, but just not my thing at the moment, maybe something I invest in in the future. I'll link below to a blog slash YouTube channel called Learning Surf Photography who have some great DIY ideas ideas on GoPro mounts. Now, as with all photography, lighting is crucial. However, when you're shooting surf photography, you're obviously at the hands of nature. You're not in a position where you're going to be able to go out and set up studio lighting or anything like that. So my tip is really as much light as you can, the better. Play around with where you want the light coming from and things like that. Lighting from the back of the wave is totally different to light from the front of the wave. A little golden tip, there is something called the golden hour in the morning and the evening, which is when the sun is quite low and sends that golden light over everything, which I'm sure even if you're not into photography, you'll probably be familiar with. There's apps and websites out there that can calculate when that'll be for you, or you could, you might just know from when the sun's going down, it's gonna hit that point. After it gets to goes past golden hour though, it goes to blue hour, which casts this murky blue look, which can, can be cool for certain types of photography. For me though, golden hour is best. I'd actually go as far to say is that the midday sun, which is normally pretty crap for a lot of photography because it just looks too bright and washes everything out, can be quite cool for GoPro photography. That said, I'm, I come from England and we don't get an awful lot of it and maybe that's why I'm saying that. These things are super susceptible to light is my experience that if you go out and it's cloudy um, compared to if you go out and it's sunny, the performance is massively different. It doesn't handle low light well at all. So if you rock up, the surf is firing, but it's cloudy and dull and miserable. Go and surf, enjoy the surf maybe. Um, if you rock up on the other hand and it is firing and sunny or golden hour, pull out your camera and get some pictures because the lighting conditions are gonna be perfect for it. Certainly that's a deciding factor I have a lot when I'm deciding whether I'm gonna go surf or shoot is the lighting. There's no point in getting pictures in crap weather, particularly with a GoPro. On an SLR, you can change the settings to help in um, worse weather conditions. But with a GoPro, you 
kind of stuck with the automatic functioning that they give you. Now the final thing I want to touch on, but I won't go into too much because I know um, at an entry level in particular, a lot of people won't be interested or have the facilities to do so, is post-production. If, if you are new photography, what you probably aren't aware of, or maybe are slightly aware, but not the full extent, is how much images are not doctored after they're taken, but improved. So when I'm shooting on my SLR camera, I shoot in something called RAW, which allows me to then go back and change all the exposure and things like that. And I, you can totally transform two images. So here's an example. Here's a picture my wife took of me when we were in Hawaii. You can see that what the camera's done, it's metered off the background rather than me in the foreground, and it's washed me out. In Adobe Lightroom, I've quite simply been able to do this, and you can see what a difference it makes. It's not perfect. Even when you're editing pictures, you want to shoot as close to what the final thing you want is, but you can see the difference. Now, GoPros don't have this much flexibility with them. They shoot only to JPEG, or at least mine does. I'm not sure if any of the newer models do RAW. I don't think they do, but GoPro, that would be an amazing idea if you did that. Uh, it'd certainly sell me on them a lot more. But yeah, so when it saves to a JPEG, you can't change the values as much. Even the guys who like post-production work like me, there's not as much you can do with it. Uh, you can, however, sorry, there's loads of birds outside. Insane. Anyway, where was I? Even if you like post-production like me, there's a very limited amount you can do with JPEG because the file basically, in very simple terms, isn't as flexible. It doesn't remember as much information, so you can't move as much information around. When you move it, it loses more quality. You can, however, play with it slightly, and I do personally put my GoPro images into Lightroom and touch them up still. So that might be something you want to look into. I won't go into it too much now. I just wanted to float it out there as an idea for you guys who are getting into surf photography and want to take it to that next step. If you do though, remember that GoPro, because it's saved a JPEG, has already done a load of manufacturing in its doing of that. And once you get into the post-production side of things, you'll notice that as well, that it's had loads of sharpness and things added to it compared to a raw image that you'll get out of an SLR. So guys, I hope you found this helpful, uh, whatever stage of photography you are at. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, because it basically just moves it up the uh, ranking order in YouTube, so it helps people find me and the channel and this video. So if you found it useful, it may help them too. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see something else I have produced, I promised you earlier in the video that I would link my review to this mouth mount at the end. So right up here, this box will take you to that review. If you'd like to see my next video, hit that circle button underneath and it'll subscribe you to my channel. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you soon.